responsible adults and... Whoops. And if a group of responsible adults can handle firearms in a responsible way... Sorry. Uh-oh. Me again. Sorry. Even at his most uncomplicatedly modest, David Cronenberg isn't one to use kid gloves when it gets down to the nitty gritty. His most touching love story shows jealousy as a decaying and literally dehumanising transformation, while his idea of a video game movie comes complete with embryonic game consoles and flash guns that shoot human teeth. With so much weirdness, it'd be easy to view 2005's A History of Violence as the most straightforward story of Cronenberg's career. Unassuming family man Tom Stahl kills a pair of armed robbers in his diner, drawing the attention of the Irish mob. With their arrival, Tom's identity slowly unravels, revealing the monstrosity of his former life. Before he became Tom, he was Joey Cusack, a cold, unrepentant killer. Did you do it for money, or did you do it because you enjoyed it? Joey did. Both. I didn't. Tom Stahl didn't. <coughs> this is about blissful ignorance, torn apart by terrible truth. Burrow past the domestic scabs and scrapes, however, and you'll find a snapshot of America, born and raised, in the shadows of violence. Deadly bouts, slapstick comedy, stylized sprays and forensic curiosity are just a few of the forms and functions of on-screen bloodletting you're no doubt familiar with. As one of the progenitors of the body horror subgenre, Cronenberg has long moulded subtext from marrow and sinew, mutilating the physical form to uncover our true nature. In the majority of his work up to this point, body horror is typically depicted with a vivid visual flair. Pulsating practical effects, the hybridisation of the organic and mechanical, and mounds of viscera. In a history of violence, there are no bizarre locales, no overt stylization, and not so much as a single chest vagina in sight. But put this film under the microscope, and there's something deeply biological surging towards the surface. This is violence as an organic phenomenon. While much of the runtime is a slow burn of homely suspense, it's in the sparing but pulverising punctuations of death where the film plays Cronenberg's bloody hand. As is so often the point of body horror, mental transformation and corporeal change are inextricably tethered. With each wound, a window to our darkest self is opened. Each demise is as fleeting as the flick of a switch, and permanently transformative. We're witnessing the painful steps of transition, moving from one state of being to the next. Living becomes dead. Innocent become complicit. Tom becomes Joey. Rather than considering Joey's reveal as an unconscious regression to some reactive, primitive form, here it's portrayed as a far more complex and considered decision. Tom is calling upon a transitory skill set when he calls Joey to the foreground. There's no pleasure derived from what needs to be done. It's just a terrible thing. Traditional depictions of violence are treated as a symbiotic means of survival rather than warring halves of the id vying for dominance. Just as Joey's brutal efficiency lays dormant beneath Tom's picturesque life, Cronenberg's straight-faced presentation hides rows of gnashing teeth. Using his outsider status as a Canadian filmmaker, he bites down with the all too recognisable images of North American mythmaking. A shotgun toting patriarch warding off intruders from his porch, and a showdown in the local saloon both seem ripped straight from a western. The teen movie high school microcosm of warring alphas and betas is here a bludgeoning display of dominance. A history of violence emulates these cliched encounters while peeling off the protective layer of nostalgia to reveal the ugliness behind even the most simple of American cinematic staples. Such sour, consuming aggression seeps into the marital foundations of Tom and Eddie. Loving caresses slow to a morbid stillness, before culminating in a sexual bare-knuckle brawl on a wooden staircase. There's a direct juxtaposition between the film's two depictions of sex and intimacy. The first is driven by tandem foreplay, and Eddie's urge to strengthen her sense of history with her husband. 
by engaging him in a performance of her younger years, she's able to reinforce the shared delusion that Tom has always been a part of her humdrum way of life. The second is a bruising, graceless exchange of clawing emotional release, all the while serving the same function as their previous loving embrace. In this instance, Tom is sharing a hereto unseen part of himself, for all its disconcerting truth. Of all the crunching physical contact elsewhere, it's this scene in particular that's raised to the most eyebrows. Scott Colbert writing in Celluloid Flesh laments its inclusion as overkill. Others consider it borderline sexual assault. While acknowledging the challenging content of this entire scene, I disagree with the assertion that it's either unnecessary or inconsiderate. Pairing sex and violence on film requires empathy, a measured communication of intent and identifiable reasons for evoking such loaded imagery. Without these crucial considerations, it would quickly become fetishistic, exploitative and crass. Nothing here is one-sided. Fearlessly and physically sold by actors Maria Bello and Viggo Mortensen, there is a feral cadence to the entire exchange. A shifting, dishevelled dance between care and contempt, attraction and revulsion, making love to Tom and fucking Joey. Whilst addressing similar concerns raised against 1996's Crash, Cronenberg responded, The assertion is that eroticism is tender and gentle, and pornography is nasty and violent. But I could create for you a version of each that would fall into those categories that would not be acceptable to either side. Not just in this scene but throughout the film as a whole, by blurring domesticity and depravity, we're forced to accept that the false binary of good and evil is no longer applicable, and by any sensible measure never really was. Even the most sacrosanct of moral and marital institutions can be corrupted, each bending, breaking or adapting in the wake of violence. By combining this familial furrowed ground with the deep-rooted Catholic connections of the Irish-American ancestry these characters share, each stomp and gunshot carries the conflicted weight of biological preservation, biblical wrath, and visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children. In this family, we do not solve our problems by hitting people! No, in this family, we shoot them! <sighs> From admiration to imitation to assimilation, Jack gradually inherits the camouflaged savagery of his father, and as such we see the once meek son of Tom take on the brutality of Joey. Joey's fraught, veiled relationship with his older brother Richie calls to mind the book of Genesis and the story of Cain and Abel. As Richie attempts to kill his younger brother, Joey is forced to commit fratricide. Jesus, Joey. <laughs> In doing so, this biblical illusion is warped, positing Cain as a slighted party acting in self-defence. While the usual suspects in the blame game of real-world violence are left unaddressed, films and video games aren't even mentioned, the intrusion of mass media is somewhat responsible for each deadly escalation, with the encroaching news coverage of Tom attracting the vulturous presence of Fogarty and his cohorts. Just as we can't draw a straight line between acts of brutality and their humble beginnings, without also considering the sociological, psychological, religious and historical influences on these actions, a history of violence offers no concrete judgement as to whether violence is inherently right or wrong, a choice or a reflex, nature or nurture. If you were to take the surface level view of A History of Violence, or the vast majority of David Cronenberg's filmography, you could be forgiven for thinking the squelching, screaming pervasiveness of violence is something of a trademark. While yes, few commit to blood-slathered scenes with as much flair as the Canadian master himself, I've always thought of gore as the means by which he's able to attack the deeper truths of morality and mortality sometimes with grave slowness, occasionally with a sudden purging release, but always with necessity and purpose. A history of violence is an elegant elegy to the innumerable ways our lives are defined by brute force and painful coercion. Our history, our family, our future, and our faith, each gained by blood and upheld by force. In Cronenberg's America, we're one nation under violence. 
Special shout out to our Patreon producers Jennifer C, Claire MD, and Nicholas Lair Revere, and a creepy Vigo Mortensen smile for all these delightful patrons who so kindly support this channel. The script for this episode was edited and overseen by Writing on Games, whose invaluable suggestion steered this video towards completion. What's your relationship with the history of violence, and where would you rank it in the Cronenberg filmography? Let us know in the comments below, and feel free to check out our Patreon at the link in the description, where for as little as a dollar a month you can get your name in the credits, as well as signing up for our Discord, Infame Out Film Club, and written monthly reviews. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, this is Inframe Out. Thank <laughs> you.